Colin Beattie has chipped in his resignation as SNP bookkeeper after his apprehension as segment of a police inquiry into the SNP's funds. He professed that he would also be resigning from his position on the Civic Inspection Board pending the conclusion of the police. The 71-year-old was rushed into detention and bailed with no charge on Tuesday. This whole event dropped after Prime Minister Hamza Yousaf laid down his administration's primacies for the period of three years. In an announcement released by Mr Beatty, it was reiterated that there is an immediate resignation as the bursar of the party. He said, and I quote, I will continue to cooperate fully with Police Scotland's inquiries, and it would be inappropriate for me to comment any further on a live case. Mr Yousaf acknowledged the moral appreciation of his submission and assured the public and the party that a new treasurer would be selected as soon as practical. The Scotland Police mobilised its task force dubbed Branch Form Inquiry into the SNP's money issues in July 2021 after receipts of grievances around the appropriation of the said How contributions. Ex-SNP boss Peter Murrell, whose wife is the emeritus SNP head and PM Nicola Sturgeon, was incarcerated fortnight ago at the duo's family abode in Glasgow and was bailed with no form of official charge with impending additional investigation. Detectives expended a couple of days combing their residence and rummaged the SNP's HQs in Edinburgh. There have been growing concerns among the tabloids that Nicola Sturgeon is the next in line to be apprehended by the Scottish investigating team in their quest to narrow down to the truth of the matter. Second-in-command PM Shona Robeson, a close associate of Ms Sturgeon, professed that it would be very uncalled for to state any sort of commentary on the above situation and cannot be specific if Nicola has spoken to the investigators. This is what the Ms Robeson told the BBC's Good Morning Scotland programme. Right at the beginning of the process I sent her a very short message asking after her welfare really and I got a very short reply. We have had no discussion whatsoever about the police investigation. It would not be appropriate for me to do so. Mr Yousaf has the view that, evidence is the only key to proving one's guilt so he would not condone incoming call to suspend Mr Beatty, Mr Murrell, and Miss Sturgeon. The police should carry on their investigation to the fullness of the law. The party raised £666,953 through ballot-associated petitions between 2017 and 2020 with a guarantee to squander these monies on the independence operation. Party folks demanded accountability of how the balance of the collected amount was drastically reduced to decimated levels under £97,000 in the Park Bank coffers at the end of 2019, and overall net assets of approximately £272,000. The Old Bailey handling the case used a couple of days rummaging through the Pear Glasgow edifice and the party's HQs in Edinburgh at the beginning of this month. There was an unavoidability surrounding this statement. It was difficult to conceive that Colin Beattie remains as SNP bookkeeper while being investigated by the Scotland Police. He broadcasted his individual choice to vacate his post after a convo with Hamza Yousaf accepting his resignation and reassured him is the right way moving forward. Nevertheless, opposition parties say Mr Yousaf ought to have sacked Colin Beattie as treasurer and gone ahead to suspend him from the SNP. This means that the first minister Yousaf is handling the treasury responsibilities and roles but cannot wait to delegate the position to a newly appointed individual who will be a member of the party. The party expressing and experiencing huge unbelievable trials as funds being investigated by the police involved looking for a replacement of auditors who resigned several months ago. The cops have confiscated a luxury motorhome in Dunfermline in front of a house. This happened the same morning Mr. Murrell was picked up by the police. ...in the party were not as they should be, um, and we are talking about the, the result of some of that now. Um, so those governance arrangements absolutely need to be overhauled. It's Nicola Sturgeon's fault though, isn't it? Well, I'm not sure it, it just is with Nicola Sturgeon here. I think ev you know, everybody perhaps has a role to play here in, with in respect, not, she was the party leader. In not resolving some of these governance issues. Um, but it probably goes beyond Nicola Sturgeon in terms of perhaps uh, a, a culture that has been allowed to develop 
uh, headquarters and in terms of the governance of the party. What kind but, of culture? Well, I think one that perhaps needed to be more open and more transparent and you know, people being able to ask questions. So, Connor, I mean, to sum up, huge problems now clearly facing the new First Minister. I think that's fair, Mark. Uh, the former leadership contender for the SNP top job, Kate Forbes, um, saying that the SNP will be in deep trouble if decisive action is not taken. We've got that admission from another senior ranking member of the SNP. We just heard from her, Shona Robeson there, saying that the party needs to get its own house in order. And clearly this is a party that has had transparency issues, what appears to be over the course of the last uh, couple of years, accusations that anyone who raised concerns, anyone who questioned uh, the leadership of the party was very quickly sidelined. Uh, that, I think, has, uh, in recent times, since Hamza Yusuf took over, he's attempted to try and reset the balance on that and be more open and frank in those exchanges. But the reality is he has got a headache on his hands as he now has to tackle filling the post of the most senior role in the SNP, the chief executive, and now someone to replace the uh, treasurer role at a time when those very finances are under the investigating uh, investigation of police.